Hey everyone, it's Mojax, back in the DJ City UK lab. I had a bit of a surprise last week. DJ Blakey, who works for Serato here in the UK, flew up to see me in Newcastle, and he bought with him an entirely new piece of software. I was not expecting this. I've been playing with it ever since. Let's take a look at Serato Studio. So this is Serato Studio, obviously very much still in beta at this point, but working well enough for us to take a look. Effectively, this is Serato's take on a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, but this is very different from a more traditional DAW like Logic or Cubase, or even something like Ableton Live. Serato have some pedigree in the production space, of course. Their first ever product was the Pitch and Time plugin, and they released Serato Sample a while ago. Studio actually takes a few cues from Sample, which you'll see as we go on, but also a lot of this stuff will be familiar to users of Serato DJ Pro. There are things like regular three-band EQ, high and low pass filters, and even Serato DJ style effects controls. One bonus of this is that your standard Serato DJ Pro hardware can be used to control the channel strips on each side and effects too. So if you're a DJ who is new to production, you'll feel at home very quickly. The workflow really isn't that far removed from just DJing. Over on the left is where you load up a drum kit or a sample, the provided instrument sounds or even a VST instrument. When you open up a new project, by default Studio loads an 808 drum kit, and you can either record in a beat which then quantizes automatically, or you can draw one in, or you can just select a genre and click through to find a pattern that you like to start working immediately. You can double up the grid if you want more options within a pattern, and choose whether the pattern is 1, 2 or 4 bars long. Close that panel up and the software generates a waveform on the fly, and you can move on to your next element. That's really what Studio is about, simple ways to get ideas down very quickly indeed. What truly sets it apart though is the use of pitch and time within the software. Up at the top you have not only the project BPM but also the project key. This means that everything you bring into the project, be it a sample or something that you play, is automatically adjusted to fit the project tempo and key. And you can switch that key on the fly. Everything inside the project will change to match it. And for me that's just killer. Ableton Live has traditionally been my software of choice, I know it pretty well, and there are tools like Scale within that software to help you play notes within your chosen key for example, but with Serato Studio, every sample you drop in there, be it a provided loop or something you pull in from your Serato DJ library, will be tweaked to fit. The same applies to instruments too. You can override it, but as standard, only suitable notes for the key you're working in will be available on your number keys or your pads. It's basically impossible to play a bum note, and that's whether you're working with the provided instruments or any VSTs you have on your system, like Massive, which I'm using here. And again, change change the project key, your played notes change to match. Actually working with samples is a lot like working with them in, well, Serato Sample. You can create different playback cue points either by having the software scan for them, or randomly with Serato DJ Pro cue points if they're available, or in slicer mode. These can then be adjusted by hand, and you have full control over parameters like attack and release for each part of the sample. You can play stuff as mono or polyphonic, set the trigger mode, and even spread one sample point over the keyboard, again working fully within the project key and BPM. Automation is super simple too. With Record Active, you can record automation for pretty much any parameter, or you can draw it in. Everything lives inside that robot button up top, so you can easily view and change any automation that you've made. I don't know how much content will be provided with the final package, but Serato gave me a bunch of loops and sounds to work with. Like so much else in studio, browsing feels a lot like Serato DJ Pro with crates and subcrates. Plus, you have full access to everything in your Serato DJ Pro library, so grabbing a cappellas or sounds from your tracks is like child's play. Effects control will be very intuitive for Serato DJ Pro users as well. Like in that software, you have three slots, all of which can be controlled using your DJ hardware or other MIDI controllers. You can apply different effects to individual drum sounds or sample slots over on the left, as well as to a whole pattern over on the right. Once you've started to build up patterns that you like, you can start to work with scenes. This again is so easy to do. You can copy scenes over to new slots, add or remove things from them, and rename them. And then you can open up the song view and start to arrange your tracks as you wish. There are two more cool things which I want to mention but which aren't in the software yet. They're definitely coming though. As with your patterns, Studio will eventually create a waveform for your full track so you can see visually what's going on. And secondly, you'll be able to export stems out of the software to allow you to continue working on the project in another DAW for mixing and mastering if you so desire.
So there you go, a first look at Serato Studio. This is very cool stuff. It's really, really accessible. I say this as someone who's been playing around with Ableton Live for years and years. I love Ableton Live, it's my DAW of choice and I can do a lot of things with Ableton Live. I really can. I know that software pretty well. But for me, as a creator, there is a certain cutoff point where I just can't do stuff and I flounder. And that is with laying down you know, stuff that's gonna be in key in the right scale, bass lines, chords, keys, etc. The actual composing part of music production, that's what I struggle with. You know, completely honestly, that's the bit that I find hard. I've got these things in my head and I find it very hard to get them down onto the system. Whereas with Serato Studio, it's very straightforward, it's very accessible, especially as a DJ, if you're using it with hardware, you've got your pads you can tap on, you've got your EQs, all of it kind of sits there naturally in your hands like it would if you were DJing. And just the whole workflow, you know, one deck, two decks, it kind of feels very natural. So I found myself doing some really fun stuff with this just in the course of a weekend. There's one big unknown factor at the time of making this video, and you might know this information by the time this drops, but that is the pricing. I do know it's gonna be subscription only. I'm not a huge fan of subscription, you know, software as a service. I'm always happier to buy things outright, but that is the way of the world. That is the way things are going. And so, you know, I can kind of understand it. What will be crucial is, well, two things really. Firstly, the pricing. How much is it gonna cost every month? And secondly, how much content are Serato going to provide for your monthly charge? Because to be honest, if I'm going to pay for this every month, I want a lot of loops and samples every month. Yeah, you can access your Serato library, you can import stuff from loop packs, whatever you need. But yeah, if I'm going to pay for it ongoing, I'm going to want to see a lot of content dropped in there every month just to kind of keep it fresh. Just in the course of a weekend, I almost feel like I've exhausted the stuff that came with the pack that Serato gave me. You know, I kind of feel like, yeah, I'm bored of those. I want some more loops. I want some other stuff just to play around with. And yes, you can use your Serato library, etc. But, you know, I want to make stuff that isn't sampling copyright material, for example. So I want a lot of different loops and so on. But either way, I'll come back to it in a few months once we know the exact lay of the land and everything else. And once I've had to, a chance to see how much they update it, what's new, we'll come back and do a full review. But in the meantime, if you can find a way to get yourself into the public beta, I suggest you do so because this thing is an awful lot of fun. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.